I'll close out She Visions with this message today. But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for God's own possession so that you may proclaim the excellencies of him who has called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Verse number 10, for you once were not a people, but now you are the people of God. You had not received mercy but now you have received mercy. You may be seated. Reading out of the message Bible, it says, but you are the ones chosen by God, chosen for the high calling of priestly work, chosen to be a holy people. God's instruments to do his work and speak out for him to tell others of the night and day difference he made for you. Jocelyn, from nothing to something, from rejected to accepted. Today I want to talk about sheroes and heroes. Sheroes and heroes. Sheroes and heroes. Uh, yeah. Wonder women. Women with swords. Superheroes. Something we are not unfamiliar with with the Avengers, the Justice League, Captain Marvel, Wonder Woman. I think there was a Batwoman, Batgirl, amen. But we have not lived our lives absent, Lakeisha, of the imagery that there are those who exist with superhuman and supernatural powers who come to save the world. They're put in comic books. They're put into movies. They're even put into our churches. As you look around this room today, there are sheroes and heroes. Handpicked, Tina, by God to save, to protect, to serve purpose. Say that with me. We're here to save. We're here to protect. We're here to serve. Purpose. There's a boy named Lucas. Lucas grew up in a small, humble village unaware of his true heritage. Lucas was known for his kindness and his leadership among his peers, yet he often felt like there was more. He often felt like something was missing. Can you identify with that? And one day while exploring his late grandmother's attic, Lucas stumbles upon an old dusty chest and inside he found a set of ancient documents and a beautifully crafted royal signet ring bearing a seal of a long forgotten kingdom. The documents actually revealed that Lucas had a startling truth. He was the descendant of a noble royal family 
and the kingdom that he was heir of had been lost to him. This discovery actually transformed Lucas's life because he went from seeing himself as just another villager to understanding that his true identity as a member of this royal lineage with a newfound identity, Lucas's perspective of life now changes. He began to carry himself with a different type of swagger. He began to carry himself with a different type of dignity. He begins to carry himself with a different type of purpose that he did not have before he discovered those documents. He was inspired by his royal heritage. He became this beacon of hope and leadership in his communicating in his community because he started advocating for uh, those who were lost and those who were considered little. He was advocating for justice. He was advocating for community. He was uh, uh, he was he was advocating for unity he was advocating for compassion Lucas's story is actually a vivid illustration of what Peter is trying to get us to see in chapter 2 verses 9 and 10 of first Peter because we are a chosen people we are royal priests we are a holy nation we are God's special possession that you may declare God's work and works in the time of darkness. How you are now may not be a direct reflection of your true identity. I need you to ask yourself on today mentally, am I a reflection of my true identity because just as Lucas uh, discovered his royal identity and embraces his responsibilities that came with him, this passage now reminds us of our spiritual identity in Christ. As believers, we are not identified by our past or our circumstances. Say that as a believer, I am not identified by my past by my circumstances or by my status I am royal I am a priest I am God's chosen this identity y'all empowers us to live differently to shine as lights in darkness and to carry out our own divine calling with dignity and purpose because we are priests Here, here is the thing the concept of identity is this, that the definition says that identity is the fact or, or the characteristic of being who or what a person or a thing is. When we identify, we identify with the idea of what a person or a thing is is through fact or characteristic we cannot change our identity because identity is based upon fact or characteristic the facts and the characteristics of who you are now identify what and who you are we notice a cat because it meows even though cats have fur and so do dogs, dogs bark and cats meow. Cows moo and ducks quack. When we're identifying a thing, there are certain facts and characteristics that help us to identify something, to call it by name. And if we cannot call it by name, we keep studying it until it identifies itself. I, as, I, as, I, as I look across this room and, and, I, and I think about who's here and who's not, those who came and those who went, those who, who professed to be one thing and then ended up showing to be another, it's one of those things where you've got to be careful what you identify a thing as until it's proven its characteristic to you consistently enough to where you don't doubt the sound that comes from it. Wait, 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 wait. Come here, church. If I can identify 
by an animal by the sound that it makes, then people ought to be able to identify the church by the sound that it makes. Because here's the truth. Animals don't create sounds, they make them. And maybe what's wrong with the identity of the church is we keep trying to create sounds when God already made the sound that we should be able to be identified for. The church does not sound like trap music. The church does not sound like rap music. The church does not sound like worldly music. The church does not sound like secular artists. The church does not sound or look like the nightclub. The church does not sound or look like anything that's contrary to the holiness of God and the the reason why people are having trouble identifying the church is because we have not shown fact or characteristic of what we really are. The concept of identity shapes your morals, Janetta. It shapes your values. Identity shapes your action. And when you are confused about your identity, none of those things are stable. You become a shape-shifting believer. Because if the Bible declares that we are chosen, royal, selected, priest, holy, called out, how dare we Decide what our identity is going to be from day to day. Here's the truth. Some of y'all don't wait to October 31st to celebrate Halloween. The identity of the church is marred because we have too many people putting on costumes every other day trying to be what they desire to be, what they hope to be, what they want to be, and none of them actually have facts or characteristics to back up who they are. Somebody shout new levels. As we go to new levels, the church must identify Christ. It must be identified by Christ, like Christ, as Christ, as God intended for us to be because the church is what it is so that God can get what he called us to do. Let me, let me run that back. Let me run that back. Let me run that back. Here it is, and it's simple. It's simple, Jazz. It's this, that the church is what it is so that it can do what God called it to do. The church is not the place where you get to be a leader because you can't lead nowhere else. The church is not the place you get to act up and act out because won't nobody pay you attention anywhere else. The church is not the place where you get to get hurt and blame the church on why you never come back, but they got your order on at McDonald's and you went back 10 more times to the same one. There's been some, 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 some restaurants I went to, Ontario, where I didn't receive the best service, but I kept going back and getting a different server. Church is the only place where people don't get what they want and then decide they never want to eat there again. But the church is what it is so that it, we can do what God called us to do. Lay hands on your chest and say, I've been called to this. I've been called to this. Say it like you mean it. I've been called to this. Say it with confidence. I've been called to do it. Come on, say it like you mean it. I've been called to do it. I've been called to do it. I've been called to do it. And because I've been called to do it, you can't cancel it. When, 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 when we are sure of our identity... You can't stop me from being who I was created and called to be. You ain't going to like this analogy, but oh well. Y'all who stopped listening to R. Kelly didn't take away his voice. Because when you're created and called, people might try to cancel you, but since they didn't create you, they can't cancel what's inside of you. I need you to help me preach on today and just nudge somebody right next to you and tell them that because they didn't create you, 
they can't cancel what's inside of you, baby. Because I've got identity. Got identity. Yeah. 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 Who? Hi. Yeah. 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 Peter is declaring that the church has special status in the earth. I come to redeem the status of the church. If we don't do nothing else in this series, we're going to redeem the status of the church. If we don't do anything else as a purpose house, we're going to redeem the status of the church because too many people keep running from buildings because they don't know that we are the living, breathing, lively stones. We are the church. But if we're going to redeem the status of the church, I got to redeem you who have not fully accepted your identifiable status. I'm going to preach it whether you like it or not. Because the truth is, the Bible says we are chosen generation. Look across the room and point at somebody and tell them you're a chosen generation. You are a part of God's possession. God claims you as he is. Come on, tell somebody else. God claims you as he is. Now let's get a little messy. Your mama might not claim you, but God will. Your daddy may not claim you, but God did. Your husband, your wife, your boyfriend, your girlfriend, your cousin, your sister, your siblings may not claim you, but God. And I come to announce that I've got some sheroes and heroes in this room who possess supernatural authority supernatural power supernatural strength it's not by power or not by might but by his spirit that we are able to conquer and do anything lay hands on yourself say I can do it yeah I can do it I can do it Mm-hmm. I can conquer that thing. I can defeat that thing. I can get over that thing. I can get past that thing. I can become a winner and not a loser. I can become a lender and not a borrower. I can become the head and not the tail. I can become above only and not beneath. I can become accepted and not rejected. I can become loved and not hated. The spirit of the living God lives inside of me. And because of that, I am his chosen vessel. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Believe it. Yeah, I feel some doubt in the room, but believe it. Believe it. This is not heresy. This is not assumption. This is matter of fact. You are chosen. Every last one of you who are blood bought believers are chosen and those of you who have not acknowledged Jesus as your Lord and Savior yet you still were chosen he didn't just die for the baptized he died for those who must believe in him for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him will not perish but they shall have everlasting life It doesn't say whoever's a part of the Pentecostal church, who's ever a part of the Baptist church, who's ever a part of the Apostolic church, who's ever a part of the AME and the Methodist and the UMC church, the Catholic church, the Presbyterian church, the Lutheran church. It says whosoever believes in him, he died for you. Help me preach on the day and just shout he died for you. You are a chosen generation chosen for high calling for priestly work some of you are twiddling your thumbs but God called you as priest not to replace Israel but to become the new level Israel I'm trying to preach to somebody who reads their Bible 
who understands history we're not just trying to duplicate what Israel did we're not just trying to duplicate what happened in Acts God made us the new level of what Israel should look like how Israel will come into the earth and transform and change a culture but here you are not even knowing your identity of being chosen get an attitude and shout at somebody you are a priest now do the work not priests like those that sit in the confessional and listen to your secrets Uh huh. and give you seven Hail Marys. No, you are a priest. You walking around with a crown on your head. But some of you have taken your crown off and exchanged your crown for crying, exchanged your crown for complaining, exchanged your crown for a condition, exchanged your crown for a circumstance. But you are chosen. You bound to a bedroom. You're bound to a soul tie. You're bound to a word curse. I'm working in here today. You're bound to a past deed, a past situation. You're bound by that. And because of that, you took off your crown. But no superhero ever goes out in regular clothes. This crown of glory ought to be something that you keep so close to you that in the moment that the priest needs to be activated you just turn that thing on somebody said pray for me you said I will because you wasn't in the spirit at that moment use your priestly hood somebody asked you for a word of encouragement you didn't have nothing right then use your priestly hood somebody asked you to serve them and you couldn't do it because you had your nerves rattled use your priestly hood somebody asked you to preach sing pray prophesy and you couldn't do it because you were out of position in your identity but use your priestly hood You are a priest. Do the work of a priest. Here's the thing, prophetess. April, we got all these people fighting over apostleships and bishoprics and haven't even mastered being priest. Wrong identity. You trying to put on armor and don't have characteristics for the armor you desire to wear. Y'all call it titles, I call it armor. Because then you get to put on your cossack and your red shirt. You get to put on your collar and your chain. You get to put on your holy garments even though you ain't been holy all week as if those cover up garments make up for the fact that you didn't do priestly work Monday through Saturday before the consecration, before the convocation and before the elevation service. I come to talk to some people who are mixed up in their identity. It's, a, it's, a, it's the concept of identity. But it's also the concept of invitation. Say concept of invitation. Now shout, I've been invited. Shout it again, I've been invited. Not to the table, but to the scene. I don't even care about tables no more. I don't care about stages no more. Just put me on the scene. Because when I roll through, you're going to know me and my whole crew showed up. Put me on the scene. You fighting over seats at the table. Now, I just need to be on the scene because y'all are fighting over scraps on the table. And some of you are hoping that some would fall off. But as long as I'm on the scene, I'm still going to get served. So what? They don't acknowledge you. You've been chosen. Uh, uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. 
let me let me let me help somebody today. Lisa, you yeah, that's a good one. Lift your hands. Oh. You might be an option to everyone else, but you're God's only option for a chosen purpose. Wait, wait, wait. Don't y'all steal her word. You didn't want it. Who am I talking to in here? You might not be an you might only be an option to everybody else, but to God, you were the only option for your purpose. Can't nobody else do what he sent you here to do. Can't nobody else do what he called you to do. Can't nobody else live out what you were born to live out. And here you are worried because you are an option to everyone else, but you are God's only option. Why don't you free yourself today and lay hands on your heart and shout out God's only option to do this work. It's not easy, but he chose you. It doesn't make sense, but he chose you. It doesn't look like the way everybody else has done it or is doing it, but he chose you. Quit trying to mimic, duplicate, carbon copy what you've seen already happen. If that was the way, we wouldn't need you here to do it another way. We spend too much time trying to do it their way that you forget God called you to do it another way. Chosen. Because every superhero has its own special gifting. Everybody can't bear Thor's hammer. Everybody can't fly like Superman and Captain Marvel. Everybody doesn't have the tool belt and the strategy of Bruce Wayne, Batman. Everybody can't climb walls and swing from buildings like Spider-Man. Everybody can't call on their special machinery like Power Rangers and Transformers. No, everybody has their own set of skills. And when we put them all together, we cannot be defeated. No, y'all didn't hear me. I said, when we put it all together, we will not be defeated. When we put it all together, we will not be defeated. When we come together as one, we will not be defeated. When we allow our superpowers to complement one another, we will not be defeated. When we quit trying to do it our own way and our only way as if nobody else is like us, we will not be defeated because all of us have something that when it's brought together it becomes so powerful that it's not defeated if the church would just come together we would not be defeated oh 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 yeah Mm -hmm. the reason Jesus could conquer the cross and the grave is because purpose stayed together but here you are staying home from where you get to get your strength for purpose. Here you are church hopping because nobody will give it to you like you want it. Here you are just trying to fit in where you can get in, going where your friends go because you at least want to be comfortable with people that you know. But here is the truth. When we all get set somewhere and we all put it together, we will not be defeated. I dare you to get an attitude and if you can, I dare you to just be bold and stand on your feet and shout at hell. We will not be defeated. I mean, act like you really believe that whatever it is, the assignment is upon your life. We will not be defeated. No weapon formed against us shall prosper. Upon this rock I build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. I shall not be defeated because I've been invited 
to be a part of this chosen group. Be seated if you can. I've been invited to be a part of this chosen group. The Bible says that he invited us to become a part of this higher calling. Mm -hmm. Say I've been called above that. Mm -hmm. Wish I had time, but I ain't got time to ask you, what is it that you've been called above, but you keep trying to go back and deal with? Because some people never want to go up. But in order for you to get to new levels, you've got to realize that there are no other levels available to you. The problem is y'all keep living like God has not put anointed staircase in front of you for you to go higher. You forget that he said, I'll make your enemies a footstool. You forget that the Bible told me that when my mother and father forsake me, then the Lord will take me up. You forget that the only way to really access new levels is to get above low level people. Um, Avery, low level leeches. I talk about you shapeshifters. Y'all the ones who shout in that moment earlier and then gonna go home and play woe is me. You dance, you scream, you cry, you fall out. You mess up our altar cloths, got us throwing stuff out in bags, thinking you free, and then you go home. And well, the world is against me. Don't nobody like me. I, 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 I wish I had this. And if I only had that other person's kind of hand, if I had that kind of support, I could do this. And I, why are you worried about somebody else's type of support? You are chosen as priests to do priestly work at a higher level. That means we can't get settled doing nothing as the church. You can't be settled just being a seat holder. You were called to a higher calling. You can't be settled just being, uh, mm, I'm sorry. I'm not. because the truth is some of you some of y'all's me, me thinks that 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 I'm, I'm preaching you not me, me thinks that that you can hide and do it in your comfort zone but God called you to a higher calling. You've got the skill. You've got the ability. You've got the supernatural strength. But you only do it at your level of comfort. But you've been invited to do it at a higher level. Who am I talking to? Who has been satisfied being comfortable even though you've been invited to go to new levels and maybe it's because you think that new levels mean new accountability and it does and because of that you're being invited to become that we are more accountable to things that don't benefit us in eternity than we are to he who is our eternal benefit. Peter declares that not only do we have this concept of identity, I'm landing this plane, 
not only do we have a concept of being invited, Kathy, to do the higher calling work, to proclaim his excellence, who called you out of your mess and decided that you would be hmm, a momentum generator. Uh, you have been invited to declare his, his wondrous works because he called you out of darkness and shined a light on you. Because at one point you weren't anything at all. But now you're everything. You are the people because you received mercy. We've talked about the concept of identity. We've talked about the concept of invitation. But lastly, I want to talk about the concept of impact. The Bible says, you once upon a time did not know what mercy was, but now you do. You've gone from nothing to something. You've gone from rejected to accept it. It's the impact of the church. Because Peter declares, Janetta, that the church has special status in the administration of God's purpose on the earth. Say that with me. The church has a special status in the administration of God's purpose in the earth. Shout, I'm an administrator of purpose. Shout it. I am an administrator of purpose. I am an answer for purpose. Mm -mm, don't say it like you guess and say it like you mean it. I am an answer for purpose. I am an arranger of purpose. I am accountable through purpose. Here is the truth, y'all. Everything that God has called us to do is built on purpose. This is a purpose house where we take lifelong learners and transform them into life changing leaders. And maybe you are like Lucas, where you didn't know that you were the heir of royalty. But now that you know that you have been chosen, the impact is that mercy is enough for me to move forward. Will you help me close today and just tell somebody mercy is enough for you to move forward. Grace is unmerited favor. It gives us what we don't deserve. But Sheena, mercy is when God blocks us from getting what we really deserved so when I tell you it's because of mercy that you can move forward I'm talking to an individual who's sitting in this room making excuses on why you can't move to the new level of your higher calling because if you were not aware of the mercy that was on your life then I'd understand, but I think I've got at least seven people in this room right now who would wave their hands and shout, I am a benefactor of God's mercy. Yeah, the songwriter says, your grace and mercy brought me through. I'm living this moment because of you. I just want to 
thank you and praise you to your grace and mercy brought me through. I know you want to praise God for grace because he keeps giving you what you really don't deserve but somebody ought to lose their mind in here today that God blocked some of the stuff that we really deserve to have to pay for. When you were mixed up in your identity, God blocked it. When you was unsure if you were really going to give him a yes, God blocked it. When you weren't uh, consistent and when you weren't, uh, yeah, acting like a child of God, God's mercy favored you. So while you're trying to sit here and come up with 5, 10, 15 reasons from your story on why you can't move to the next level, I need you to understand today that mercy gave you enough to move forward will you help me close on the day and find somebody and just lay your hands on their shoulders and tell them mercy is enough for you to move forward not get up and start moving yeah tell somebody and prophesy to them all over the room get up and start moving because I've got mercy on my life. I've been chosen in this life. And even though I have not always acted like a superhero, I am a shero. I am a hero. And there's not a devil in hell that's going to stop me from living out my purpose. Will you help me close on a day and just shout it like you got an attitude? There ain't a devil in hell that's going to stop me from living out my purpose. Shout it again. There's not a devil in hell. Not a devil in my house. Not a devil in my family tree. Not a devil in my bloodline. Not a devil in my ancestry. Not a devil on my job. Not a devil in my school. Not a devil in my church. That's going to stop me from living on purpose because I am what God says I am. And nay, in all these things, we are more than conquerors. Through Christ Jesus, who loves us, I am persuaded that there's nothing that's going to separate me from my purpose. Will you help me close on the day and just grab somebody by the hand? And tell your neighbor, 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 nothing is going to stop you from living out your purpose. Come on and put your preaching voice on. Grab your ear and throw your head back and say, neighbor, there is nothing uh, and no one uh, who's going to take your ability. <clears throat> I said shake that neighbor's hand uh, like you've got power in your hand. Uh, like you've got the Holy Ghost in your hand. Uh, like you've got prophetic utterances in your mouth. Uh, like you've got healing in your hand. Shake your neighbor's hand. Shake them and rock them. Rock them and shake them. Shake them and rock them. Rock them and shake them. And tell them, neighbor, it is no secret what God can do. What he's done for others, he'll do the same for you. Now let that hand go and begin to give God some praise. Because the Lord has called you to a marvelous work. Point at three people and tell them you've been called in this generation. God didn't let you be born at another time. God didn't let you be born in another season. God didn't let you be born too early. God didn't let you be born too late. God knew that the world needed you now. 
y'all ain't saying nothing in here you haven't felt needed in a long time but I come to help you on the day to tell you the world needs you now touch one more neighbor and tell them neighbor the world needs what's inside of you if you're an author write that book if you're a songwriter write that song if you're a business owner start your business start your practice what you waiting on the Lord is calling you to another level help me close on the day and look at somebody and tell them I don't know about you but I'm going to new levels y'all ain't saying nothing in here turn um, turn and find somebody and tell them I don't know what you plan to do but I'm not staying here on ground level chickens can't hang with eagles I'm going to a new level but they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength they shall mount up with wings upon eagles they shall run and not be weary they shall walk and not faint where my superheroes at where my wonder women at where my heroes at where my men who possess anointing where my women who possess an anointing for the Bible says help me close on the day and shout the Bible says it's the anointing that destroys the yoke it's the anointing that destroys the yoke now lay hands on yourself and shout I've got the anointing to destroy the devil I've got the anointing to cast out demons I've got the anointing to heal disease y'all ain't saying nothing in here shout I've got the anointing to cast out devils I've got the anointing to defeat demons I've got the anointing to deliver those who've got disease now act like it right there look at your hands your hands new hands your feet new feet your mouth new mouth your mind new mind your ears new ears everything new everything new I don't care how you last remember me shout at somebody I don't identify like that I don't identify like that you might have seen me with my head down I don't identify defeated I identify victorious you might have saw me on my sick bed I don't identify sick I am healed you might have identified me as angry mad uncontrollable I don't identify them as that I am who God says I am he was wounded for my transgressions he was bruised for my iniquities the chastisement of my peace was upon him and by his stripes I am not that 
water <laughs> Open your mouth Oh shucks Open your mouth And shout By His stripes I'm Not that Lay hands on yourself And shout by his stripes I am Not that I'm victorious I'm on my way To another level High five three people And tell them I'm on my way To new levels God's church Is on its way To new levels Preachers Are on their way To new levels Prophets Are on their way To new levels Worshippers And dancers Are on their way To new levels Evangelists And pastors Are on their way To new levels Deacons And elders Are on their way To new levels Creators And ushers Are on their way To new levels Servers And volunteers Are on their way Are on their way Are on their way To new levels And I'm glad That God Ain't forgot about me while I was experimenting with what I thought I wanted to be. Lay hands on yourself and say, Thank you, God. You didn't forget, you didn't take it away while I was experimenting my way. And because you kept your hand on me, because you chose me because I'm in your care I'm not gonna sit here settle in open your mouth and shout that on the day I'm not gonna sit here settle in I deserve new levels y'all ain't saying nothing in here I deserve new levels Levels I deserve to go up, 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 up. It's only up from here. I'm going up. If you look in for me down here, I'm not there. I'm going. And when praises go up, God's blessings come down. Open your mouth, open your mouth, open your mouth, open your mouth, and shout. New blessings are waiting for me. Throw back your head. Throw back. And shout New blessings Are coming to me Now take your left foot And step up Take your right foot And step up Take your left foot And step up Take your right foot And step up And shout I'm going in your hands up 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 till it's on your tongue up 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 open your mouth and shout up 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 
up, 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 up,
Lord today? How many will decide to recommit your life again today? But you still have an opportunity if you've been choosing something other than our Lord Jesus the Christ. And so God keeps giving us chances after chance after chance. He's a great God like that. But we don't want to take advantage of his mercy and his grace. Be thankful for being chosen for such a time as this. Could you imagine the revival that is taking place right now? And the revival is for you. The revival is for us and then it spreads abroad because there are many wounded soldiers. But God is calling you home now. This is a purpose house. And because it's a purpose house, we're not the one that's just sitting down. The Bible tells us that there's a lot of work to do, but the laborers are few. And so a lot of times you find yourself doing one more job and another job and another job and another job. But it's okay because God is sending destiny helpers. And we're going to keep working and we're going to keep serving. We want to keep doing what God has called us to do. Hallelujah. And I want to speak to those of you who have been weary. God is giving you strength even right now. Hallelujah. Come on and receive the strength right now. So Lord, it's only been me. I've been doing it. I've been holding it up. I've been holding it up. Hallelujah. And he's giving you strength and the capacity. The capacity, the fortitude. He's strengthening your bones. He's strengthening your mind. Hallelujah. So as you have stepped even further into your destiny and accepted exactly who God has called you to be, go ahead and say thank you. Come on, say thank you with your lips. Tell the Lord thank you for being chosen. Thank you for choosing me for this work. Hallelujah. Nobody else can do it like you. And you're fit for this. Sound I'm fit for this. Even with all the stuff that I have, I'm fit for this. Because he chose me. And as you walk further into your destiny, those things that were help holding on to you are going to fall off. As you submit to the will of God fully, oh, you're not even going to look like what you look like today. Not just new levels, but new me. New way of thinking. New hearing, new eyes, new speech. I don't speak condemnation over myself. I don't speak doubt. I don't speak weariness. But I speak in faith. Because of what he said. Say that with your mouth, I speak in faith because of what he said.